Hey everybody, Sean from Silicon Theory here. And now that I'm back from New York and the LG G7 ThinQ phone launch event, I wanted to give some first impressions and some of my thoughts about having attended the event. So first off, big shout out to LG for the invite. I uh, really enjoyed my time in New York and really enjoyed my time spent with the phone. So I wanna give just a few impressions and then talk a little bit about some more information that came out after I left New York. So um, in using the phone, I wanna say that I really, my first impression was I really kind of dug it. And I know that there's going to be some people who are really not feeling the notch and um, I'm one of those people who's not really feeling the notch too, but the end result is is that LG gave you some choices in the software to either mask it completely or to change the color to maybe give it a little bit of a different feel. So that's kind of fun. The phone feels good in hand. The use of the Gorilla Glass 5 on the front and the back kind of gives it a, a really nice, um, almost soft touch feel in hand. I would probably compare it to like the Galaxy S9 and S9 Plus in terms of how it feels in hand. Uh, it's really nice and it's got some good um, heft to it. It's not overly heavy um, and we'll talk a little bit about that in the battery section. But the uh, next impression that I got was that it was pretty snappy and pretty smooth with the exception of the camera module. Um, as I mentioned in my hands-on video, which um, I'll link in the description so you can check that out if you want to, but um, it felt a little laggy, which was kind of weird considering that the rest of the UI felt really nice and polished and really fluid. So. Uh, not sure what's happening there, but I'm going to have my review unit in the next couple of days, so I'll definitely give that a chance to test it out. Uh, and by the way, if there's anything you really want to have, uh, any questions about the phone you really want to have answered, make sure you leave a comment in the video below, and I'll address it in our full review video coming in the next couple of weeks. So the last thing I wanted to talk about in the first impressions was I really think that... Um, this is kind of a, a, a tipping point for LG. Like this phone uh, and potentially either the V35 or the V40 that's coming on down the road, um, maybe towards the end of the year, could kind of be a, a make or break time for LG. Uh, in the news recently, they posted some record profits, but none of it was due to their mobile division. And uh, they really need a hit. Like the G2 and the G3 were really fantastic for them, but it's been kind of downhill since the G4. The G4 was just okay. The G5 was a complete disaster, and the G6 was kind of a writing of the ship. Now, there were some things wrong with that phone, and those were addressed in the V30 later on that year, and I think that those things have even been further refined in the new G7. Now, whether or not the thin Q branding for all of their AI stuff is going to go anywhere, uh, remains to be seen and like I said we'll definitely put it to the test in our full review but hopefully this device can really move LG forward and bring back a player in the mobile competition space because we need that we all need that as consumers so a couple of other things that were information that came out afterwards was we still don't know about the price um, as I probably mentioned to pretty much everybody who would listen uh, I got a chance to meet up with uh, Flossie Carter at the event and he and I talked for about 10-15 minutes on some of the things that we thought might hold this phone back and one of them is definitely the price uh, I'm thinking somewhere in the 699 space is probably right Floss was thinking maybe even lower than that like 649 in order for it to be a hit so as soon as we get some more information on the pricing um, we'll definitely let you know and follow up on that Availability was not uh, known at the time of the event, but has subsequently come out afterwards. Uh, Verizon said sometime uh, later on this year. T-Mobile said later on in the spring. And Sprint announced that pre-orders would be available beginning around the 24th or 25th of May. So um, AT&T uh, announced also that they are not going to carry the G7 ThinQ at all, that they've partnered with LG for an exclusive carrier branded phone. That's all I'm going to say about that. Now, some of the other things that we don't know about is how well is a 3,000 milliamp hour battery going to hold up? It does have the Snapdragon 845, and lots of phones these days have a 3,000 milliamp hour battery, but it does seem a little bit on the small side for a phone of a 6.1 inch display size, especially since that LCD is supposed to get up to 1,000 nits. And it also does uh, drop a little bit, uh, around 300 milliamp hours from the G6. So, better processor but smaller battery? Eh, remains to be seen. Again, we'll talk about all of that in our full review. So I think that's pretty much all that I had from the first impressions. But as I said, if there's anything specifically you want to know or want us to cover in our review, leave a comment down below. Appreciate you watching. If you enjoyed the video and the hands-on video from before, you know to gently press that thumbs up button. And if you want more of our content, make sure you hit that button that looks like our logo in the corner to subscribe. Thanks again for watching. And remember, as always, we will talk tech soon.